Let's say some unknown individual reached out to you in LinkedIn and sent you this file. Most of us will try to open it immediately, but there might be some danger hidden in the file. This tool will help you check whether that file is malicious or not. In this video, we will explore a free tool that scans for malwares from a file or any location in a machine's hard disk. This tool is ClamAV, which is an open source antivirus engine for detecting Trojans, viruses, malware, and other malicious threats. I know this is an old tool and some of you might already be familiar with, but as you saw from my last video about Linus, we found out that I need to have a malware scanner and this is the first tool that came to my mind. So let's go ahead and explore this. I'm currently logged on inside my Arch machine, but I installed ClamAV on another host, which is running Athena OS. So let's connect there. This machine is running on top of Nix, so in order to set up ClamAV, we need to modify the Nix configuration files. To install ClamAV, we need to modify this file. Inside this, we just append the package name at the end of the list. After that, we need to configure it by modifying the main Nix configuration file. We first need to create the clam av local group, then create the user pointing to that group. After that, we need to create the directories that will contain the clam av database and configuration files. In Nix, the way on how to create files and directories is via the systemd temp files module. We put d as the first value. Next will be the directory path followed by the permission and owners. The systemd service performs automatic cleanup of files, meaning it will delete any file or directory it created after a certain period. So we need to prevent that by putting a dash at the end. We will do the same for the database, log, and runtime paths. After that, we need to create the configuration file for the Clam AV daemon and a separate one for Fresh Clam, which is a service that regularly updates the Clam AV database. The location of the database is under varlib Clam AV, which we already created from the temp files module above. It will download virus definitions from this address. Finally, we save this file and run NixOS rebuild to apply the configurations. After that is applied, we need to do few verifications. Check first the status of clam AV daemon and make sure it is running and there are no errors from the logs. Then repeat same step for fresh clam service. The service is now running in the background, but for demonstration purposes, let's try to run some manual scans. We will use the clam scan command. Let's try this first against a normal file. It's trying first to load the virus definitions. Then there is some compilation happening which we will discuss shortly. Since this file is not malicious, the results are okay and passing. Before moving to the next demo, let's try to understand what is happening under the hood. The purpose of the clam AV daemon we set up a while ago is to load the virus definitions from disk to memory. It performs this during startup and whenever there is any updates from the virus database. Aside from the virus definitions from the database, ClamAV also has different small programs that performs various detection logic. They are written similar to C programming language and compiled into bytecode for performance. The ClamScan is a utility tool that performs ad hoc scanning of files and directories. Since this is not a daemon, every time we run this command, it will perform the virus definition loading and bytecode compilation. That is the reason why on the succeeding demos, we will see it doing same process all over again during start. Now let's try to run a scan against a malicious PDF file. Again, ClamScan will perform same loading and compilation at start. This time it found something. A dropper agent is a small malware whose goal is to install additional malware. So if you open this file, expect that this will execute tasks in the background, which will compromise your machine. A good practice is to run ClamScan on any file you are not familiar with or don't open it at all. Aside from scanning files, ClamAV can also scan directories. Let's try running it against slash temp. It is better to run this with sudo to be able to scan everything. This may take a bit of time, so I'll pause the video and come back. It's finished now, so let's take a look. It was able to detect 23 files. Nothing is infected. This means it wasn't able to detect any Trojans or viruses. There is nothing special about scanning directories. It just looked for files inside and performed same logic for threat analysis. Now let's see what happens if we scan an infected directory. This time we are scanning a larger location, so let's save the results to a log file. I'll pause again for a moment and come back once this is finished. 
Scan is completed, so let's take a look. It scanned 4,000 files and it flagged three of them. The size of the scan is one gig and it took eight minutes. The scan time depends on system resources. In my case, I'm using a virtual machine, so this can be faster if I put more cores or memory. Let's check what are the infected files. The last two are just the same sample PDF files we used earlier, so let's ignore them. The first one is a legitimate Trojan hiding inside a zip file. Trojans are type of malware that hide as a legitimate program, but they don't replicate like worms. So as we see, ClamAV can analyze different file formats and not only PDF files. Another way of removing noise from the output is to use dash O, which ignore files that are not malicious. This will print only the infected files, but still shows a scan summary below. In most antivirus engines, when an infected file is detected, it will be quarantined automatically. We can do same thing with ClamAV using the Move option. Here we see that during the process, it also moved the file to the quarantine location. So once the scan is finished, we should no longer see the infected file on the original location. This is a good strategy. For example, you can send infected files to a remote share. Then you can mount that share on a sandbox machine for analysis. Another way of scanning a file is through a data stream. For example, we have here a benign looking image. We can cat the file and pipe it to ClamScan. It's telling us that this signature was found. This is a standard signature used for testing malware scanners. So what I did is create this file with the following content. This type of signature is also used by other antivirus engines and not only by ClamAV. One of the major sources of attacks is from emails through phishing links or attachments. So it makes sense also to scan email locations for possible malware. We see here the ClamAV was able to find something malicious inside the spool directory. Let's open that file through bat command so we can easily see the links. Here it is obvious that this has a high chance of being malicious since it is just pointed to a hard-coded IP address rather than a trusted domain like Amazon.com. ClamAV can also be used for Windows. In fact, there are nice features there which are not available in the Linux version. For example, in Windows, ClamAV can scan the virtual memory of the machine for any malicious executing processes. It also has the capability to kill or unload infected modules. So far, while trying out ClamAV, the thing I don't like is that there is no easy way to configure the notifications. It's not something built in, meaning you need to configure it yourself, such as creating a dedicated script. So far, I find ClamAV to be the best malware scanner I can use for my Arch machine. There are more features that I haven't discussed, such as scanning executables, ISO files, or other special file formats like OneNote pages. If you want to get the full instructions for installing ClamAV in Nix, let me know in the comments below and I will publish it in my GitHub repository. I hope you learned something today. If you find my content valuable, please support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. See you on the next one.